Of course, the whole reason for learning about collections was so that we can use them to do something that we find interesting or to, to help us solve some problem. And in the case of collections, they give us the ability to store and manipulate significant amounts of data, things that we would have had a hard time working with without having a collection. So this video is dedicated to playing with some data, okay, working with a data set. And the data set that we're going to work with is actually baby names in the United States. So the Social Security Administration, you can see the URL there, uh, has a set of files that they store. You can pull down a national file or a state-specific file. We're going to play with the state-specific data. And I have already gone and downloaded this zip file, and I have unzipped it. And so I have a directory called baby names that has one file for every state. I also do have the data for the national, which is broken out by year, so you are more than welcome to play with that if you want. And we're just going to pick one of these states uh, to look at the data for. And I'm actually going to pick the state of North Dakota. It's one of the smaller data files in here. And we should look at, at that file to see what it looks like. So this file has a bunch of lines inside of it. I just jumped to the, the end there. Um, every line in the file has the state code, which in some ways we don't care about that much because the entire file is all going to be ND. It has a gender, and so men are at the bottom of the file, women are at the top of the file. After the gender is a year, the name, and how many people were given that name in that year. And as you can see, if I page through this, this goes back from 1910 all the way up to the current times. And these, this is a fairly large file. If we quit and we run word count on it. So even though this is one of the smaller data files, it still has 43,858 lines inside of it. And that's going to be significant to us in just a bit because we don't yet know how to stop reading. Actually, in some ways, we don't know how to read from files. We definitely don't know how to stop reading a file when we get to uh, the end of it. So, so that number is going to be significant for us. So I'm going to create a new Scala script. I'm going to call it names.scala. And we're going to read in all of those lines from the file. Now, previously we could have written a recursive function to that for doing that. Now it's actually quite simple for us to read them all into an array or a list using the fill method. So I'm going to create a variable called name lines that is array.fill. And we're going to read the whole thing, 43,858 lines. And for each one, we're just going to call read line. So that gives us a, an array of strings. And each string is going to have the format that we saw with values separated by commas. And what I want to do is I want to break out each one of those lines into its separate pieces. So to help us, I'm going to make a short name for something. I'm going to do a type declaration. Uh, and we'll have a this type declaration, we'll call it name data, is going to be the tuple of, I'm going to throw away the state code. So I have a string for the gender, an int for the year, a string for the name, and an int for how many people were given that name. Okay. And what I would like to do is I would like to process all of these lines to actually pull out the data from them. So I want to say name data equals, and the question is how can we go through and process all of these lines? Well, we have a higher order method that's good for doing exactly that and it's the map method. So I'm going to take all of those lines and I'm going to map them across the function that was going to break apart a line. So it takes a string and it gives us back one of these. And I'll call this function 
parse line. And let's go up here and let's write parse line. So def parse line. It takes as an input a line, which is a string, and it gives us back a name data. And the beauty of map here is the fact that this function, you know, in some ways we're breaking our problem down. This function works with one line. It will get one line like this and is supposed to return one name data from it. And thanks to map, we can use that function repeatedly on all of the data and very quickly get back the entire parsed file. So how does this work? Well, I need to break that up on commas. How can we do that? Well, we recently saw that there is a split method and you can pass it a delimiter and it will break the line up into an array of strings. And so if we call split on this, we should get back an array that has ND in the sub zero, F in the sub one, on the 1910 in the sub two, etc. Now we need to take that and return a tuple for of this structure, string int, string int. The first value is parts sub one. As I said, I'm throwing away the state code. So I'm skipping the state code and I'm just taking the, the gender as the first element there. And then an int, that will be parts sub two dot two int, that'll be the year. Parts sub three is the name. And parts sub four dot two int is the count of how many people use that name. So at this point, I have theoretically read in the entire data and broken it apart and created now I have an array of tuples or an array of name data, if you wish. We can check that by calling name data dot for each print line. And we run it over here. Now, in order to get this to process that file, I need to use IO redirection because once again, we don't actually know how to read from files yet. We're just reading lines from standard input. So this read line is gonna take, we could sit there and type at the keyboard, but I really don't feel like typing in 43,000 lines. By using the input redirection here, we can take the contents of that file, baby names, nd.txt, and make that be the standard input. And we run it, and then it goes through and it prints. If you were watching closely, you might have seen there was a warning because we need to import the standard input there. Okay. So we have all the data. Now, what are we going to do with it? Well, what I'm not gonna do normally is print it. How about we ask a simple question, okay? What is the most common female name in the year 1988? Okay, how would we answer that question? Well, first we need to get down to female names from 1988 name data dot we're cutting down the data we're getting to a smaller set that is exactly what the filter method does for us so we're going to filter this and we want to find only the name datas where the first element is an F and the second element is 1988. That would give us the subset of names that we want to consider. And if we want, we could then just print those out. Okay, so here's the set of names they happen to be sorted from the most common to the least common. So we can see that Amanda was the most common name for females in North Dakota in 1988. But if they weren't sorted, we'd still need to go through and find that. So we could store this inside of a variable. And 
instead of printing it out. And then we could look for the highest frequency name. Well, one way that I can do that, max names equals, I'll take my F1988. I'm going to pull out only the last field for how many times these things occur. So the underscore four value, and then I want the max. And we can print line max names. That should be the number of times that the most common name occurred, which is 157, as we saw previously. And then I can go back and I can pull out what names it was that occurred that many times. So I can do f 1988.filter for anything where the frequency was equal to max names. And then we can print line those. And there we would have found the most common name in 1988. There are many, many other things that you could do with this data set using a combination of maps, filters, counts, for eaches, whatever, all the different methods that we've discussed for collections, you could bring them to bear and answer lots of different questions about this. You could do things like add up all the people that were born in a particular year by filtering out only those years and then add, mapping it to how many there were and then summing them up. So lots of different things. You should definitely play around with this data to make sure that you're comfortable with using collections to do data analysis like this.